Hello, this is Stokes Baker, and today I would like to talk about how to use Microsoft Excel to perform a Fisher's Exact Test. A Fisher's Exact Test is used to analyze uh, nominal data. Nominal data are data involving categories. A classic example of nominal data would be counting fruit flies like in a genetics experiment. One normally would go about analyzing this by doing chi-square analysis. However, chi-square analysis assumes that you have relatively large sample sizes. So if your sample size is less than 20, or then fewer than 80% of your cells have values, expected values of 5, then you cannot use chi-squares, in which case you would use a Fisher's exact test. The assumptions of the Fisher exact test are the same as those for the chi-square. You have nominal data that are independent and that you have no bias. The null hypothesis for the Fisher exact test is the same as the null hypothesis for a chi-square test of independence and that is you're working with independent events that occur simultaneously. The Fisher exact test is based upon a hypergeometric distribution Basically, the idea is you're going to calculate the probability of an event occurring based upon the number of combinations that can create that, that observations and also the number of combinations that can create more extreme versions of those combinations. I'm showing you right here the equation for calculating combinations where C stands for combinations, N is the number of observation units, X is the number of times that an event occurs. NCX and this NX with this parentheses are two different versions of the same uh, notation. And that equation is N factorial divided by X factorial times N minus X factorial. To calculate the probability that an event is occurring, you set up your contingency tables where we have cells A, B, C, and D. And then we have our various subtotals and our grand total right over here. The way you calculate the probability is the number of combinations for the first row times the number of combinations of the second row divided by the total number of possible combinations. Now in our example, we could be evaluating a recently developed vaccine for disease, disease like Ebola. You might want to determine if there's gender differences on the susceptibility and resistance after vaccination to the disease. Here's our data set, relatively small, 26 observations. Though we do have more than 20 observations total, uh, unfortunately when you do the expected values, less than 80% of the values have expected values of 5 or above. In this case, 50% of the values are below 5. So that means we can't use chi-square tests, so we have to use Fisher's exact test. To calculate our probability, we're going to first do our first combination, which is A plus B over A. A and B are the first two ops, first row. And we're going to look at the sum of that row, which is 9. And, and the lower, this value A right here represents the susceptible observation which is number one there. So our combination is a nine to one combinations which is nine factorial divided by one times nine minus one factorial. And you simplify that out that's up to nine. Now you need to do the same calculations with C plus D over C and capital N divided by AC. I've done all those calculations by longhand. There's the first one we just went over. Uh, the CD over C is, is actually CD are 13 and 4 which is 17 and C is 13. And our last one is N over A plus C. A and C is 14 and 12, so that's 26, so that's 26, 14. And again, I've done those calculations by longhand. Now this is just simply plug and chug algebra, where the nine is for the first 
combination times uh, the second combination, which is 2,381, divided by the total number of combinations, which is uh, this very large number right here. I'm not going to even say it. And that simplifies down to is 0 0.002218. I'm going to call that my P cutoff. Now, this calculation is rather cumbersome. Fortunately, Excel has some tools to speed up the process and I'm showing you those tools in this slide. What Excel has is a command called combin, C-O-M-B-I-N with the argument n comma x. So for example our first cell which is a 1, 8 with a subtotal of 9, we'd say combin e9 comma c9, e9 being our subtotal and C9 being our one susceptible. For our next row, it would be common E11, comma C11, which is 17 and 13. And for our final row, it is common 12, E12, comma C12, 26 and 14. And then this equation is shown right here, which is Th this value 9 times 2,383 divided by the 9 million, 9.6 million value. Now to complete Fisher's exact test we have to figure out all possible combinations that allow us to have the subtotals being 14, 12, 9, and 17. And I find it the easiest way to do this is to take our four cells A, B, C, and D and just arrange them in three columns A, B, C, and D appropriately labeled and then for example our observed data was 1, 8, 13, 4 with a grand total of 26 and then rearrange it so that these first two columns always add up to 9, the second two columns always add up to 17 and the grand total always stays at 16 all those possible combinations are shown in this slide. This slide is showing you how I set up my spreadsheet to automate the process. Again, these blue numbers right here is our uh, observed data. And I've done this, this blue row here. And again, we need to do all combinations to give us the same subtotals. So the way I have it set up is I have our four columns, A, B, C, and D. And then for the AB subtotal, I've now arranged it so it sells these two to give us the subtotal. For CD, I arrange it that way. For AC, I arrange it that way. And for BD, I arrange it that way. And then of course we have our grand total. Now what we need to do is to arrange our, our cells so we do all possible combinations of maintaining our same subtotals. So for example, cell susceptible males is 1. It's possible to have a value of 0 right there. And if we were to do that, A plus B should add up to 9. So if, if A is 0, B has to be 9. Now for AC, it always has that add up to 14. So if A is 0, C needs to be 14. And then finally, BD has to add up to 12. So if B is 9, D needs to be 3. And if you notice, all our subcolumns, subtotals, and grand totals are, remain the same. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all those cells and use Excel's click and drag function to fill it in. Now once I know I got see these negative numbers, I know that I've gone too far because you can't have negative counts. So I'm just going to delete those. And those are all the possible combinations.
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm sorry, each one of these three combinations for each row. Again, our first one was A, B, combination A. So A, B is right here. Combination A is right there. C, D, combination C is shown right here. N combination AC is shown right here and then the corresponding probability is shown right there. Now I'm calling this value that's implied by P cut off. To complete our calculations of all our probabilities. We're now going to use Excel's click and drag function. So I'm going to highlight our combination calculations and the probability. I'll first drag it up to the top row. And then same thing for the lower rows. So again, we've now done all our calculations and we have all our probabilities. Now again, we want to determine those values of P that are smaller than or equal to our P cutoff. And the P cutoff, again, is the blue values, which are the observed data. So to make it easier to identify which values, I'm going to use Excel's logic functions. This is purely optional. You can do it by inspection. But if you want to use the logic function, you can start off with an equal sign. Then we're going to say P cutoff is smaller than or equal to P cutoff. And we're going to put the dollar sign between the N and the 18. But this one, which is smaller than a P cutoff, also says true. So I'm going to highlight in yellow those values that we need to use in our calculation. So we're going to do our P value that we're going to compare to the alpha. And that is going to be the sum of the P values that are smaller than or equal to P cutoffs, which are highlighted in yellow. So it's that value plus that value plus that value. Again, you don't have to use the logic function. You can do it by inspection. And then we're going to put in our value of alpha. Alpha is equal to 0 0.05. We're now going to evaluate our null hypothesis. We will accept the null hypothesis when P our calculated value P is larger than or equal to alpha. So we're going to use the logic function again. They don't have to do it this way, but I like it. This is P is larger than or equal to alpha. It's going to say false. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. By rejecting the null hypothesis, we are saying there is gender bias in the effectiveness in the vaccine. I hope you find this useful. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.